Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Dumas. And this is the Garbutt Dumas Real Estate Podcast. New Westminster. All right. This is my first podcast one on one with the camera. <laughs> so Denny's, uh, Denny's absent from this one, but I wanted to use this opportunity to chat about uh, my experience with New West and just to, this is all about New Westminster as a city. So if you're curious to find out more about the city um, and and where it's going and, and how it is, how my experience has been with it from being without kids to a full family with kids in this city, and I've moved a ton within the city. This is what we're all going to talk about here right now. So uh, how would I describe New West? New West is, um, it's a small suburb. It's like a small town in a big city. Uh, it is, it's kind of like an east van of the suburbs in a way. It has a lot of history and character and old buildings and charm. Um, from like a scale size, it, 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 that small town, big city really comes from the fact that I believe the population is around 70 or 75,000 people which to put in perspective, you know, Burnaby is 275,000 people. And at the current population and size, there's one high school. So there's, uh, you know, New West is kind of known for, you know, NWSA, NW, <laughs> um, lacrosse, community events, and high property taxes. So the, that is New Westminster. Uh, but it, it's a great community, and uh, I've loved it, and I've fallen in love with it. And, and I moved here in 2007 from Burnaby, uh, and I feel like in the, I guess that would be, what, 13 years that I've been here compared to the 24 I've been in Burnaby, I feel very much more embedded in this community. Maybe because I have kids, maybe because I'm a realtor now, I don't know, but New West has has won me over. Um, so New West specifically, what draws people to here? So aside, like what keeps people here and what people that live in the community love is the charm and the, the community aspect. You, you know, you're more likely when you go out uh, for groceries or go out for a walk, you're more likely to run into someone you know, That kind of like that small town feel. Um, it's also very centrally located. Five Skytrain stations, reasonable commute to downtown. Most, a lot of people do it. Um, and the, you know, the, the condo options are quite good for the city. So there's lots of condos, less housing options available, but for detached homes and condos, it is more affordable than Burnaby. And a lot of people that are say buying their first place, um, that can't afford Vancouver or Burnaby will settle for, say, a New Westminster. Uh, and in terms of price points, uh, the people that are looking at New West from our experience are tend to be either, one, they live in New West and they only want to be in New West, or two, if they're coming from another market like Vancouver or relocating and not tied to a city due to loyalty, um, they're often looking at New West, Coquitlam, Port Moody combined. Similar price points, uh, similar distance from Vancouver. Um, and what wins New West over is a little better condo selection with SkyTrain access. And for those that kind of like get drawn into the history and, you know, character. So uh, what brought me to New West? Why I moved to New West? I moved to New West in 2007 from Brentwood area of Burnaby. And it was real simple. I had a one bedroom with my wife, Diana, in, in Brentwood. And we looked at how much a two bedroom was out there. And basically it was, I think it was about a hundred to $150,000 more than a two bedroom in New Westminster. Or I mean, another analogy here is for the, for our one bedroom in Brentwood, we could get a two bedroom in Dan in New West. So when we recognized the value of that, we, we moved to 814 Royal, which is news North. And we got a two bedroom in Dan for basically the same value as our one bedroom in tandem in Burnaby. And that's what brought us here. Um, I became a realtor right after we moved here in March of 2008. And at the you know, onset of when I was beginning in real estate, most of my life was in Burnaby. So most of my attention marketing was in Burnaby. Uh, but living in New West, I decided at, you know, early on in year one to start splitting my attention between New West and Burnaby. And I found I was just getting much more success in New West than Burnaby. So that really uh, what, what, what embedded me more in the city was the fact that the community clearly related to my marketing better and I was getting better results from it. Um, but my, my parents moved to Victoria Hill. They moved to the Glenbrook townhomes uh, in 2007 and, or sorry, same year as I did, but just earlier in the year. And that was the first area that I started marketing to. It was Victoria Hill. And Victoria Hill, um, I, I think... Uh, 
what, what was so attractive to Victoria Hill is, well, one, uh, I personally sold a lot of units there when the market crashed in 2009 and Ani liquidated them uh, for 25 to 30% off. So that was the initial onset of it. But ongoingly after that, it was, it's just a more affordable new uh, condo option. So oftentimes, buyers were attracted to Victoria Hill because two bedrooms were the cheapest newer two bedrooms uh, that they could get. And it was because it's not close to SkyTrain, really, uh, in their wood frame. And Ani built pretty basic, you know, units. So from a cost perspective, they they were very attractive and affordable. And Victoria Hill is kind of where my relationship with New West and real estate starts out. That was where I first marketed. That's where my business started growing. That's where I um, personally just had some success uh, and started farming and farming is marketing regularly. So, but, but my parents lived there and it was just a great development that attracted people with dogs that love greenery, staring out the window at looking at uh, greenery as opposed to sky trains. <laughs> um, when, when I moved to New West in say 2007, I lived in news until 2010 and maybe I'll just kind of go into my experience living in New West because in the, in the time that I've been there, I've lived in nine different properties. So since 2007, moved to 8140 News, bought a place after that on Hamilton Street, a lot, built a little tiny skinny home on Hamilton Street, bought a place uh, at 328 2nd, sold the home on San, uh, Hamilton Street to move into a 120-year-old home in Queens Park. So went from condo to brand new home to 120, built an 1891 home. Then we built a home at 902 2nd Street in Glenbrook North, uh, same street, different address. Uh, so we went from old to new. And uh, I bought uh, 1006 Dublin Street with the intent on building there. Didn't do that because we opened a brewery instead. <laughs> Sold that for a loss. Um, but that was uh, going to get developed, and it was uh, a flop. Um, after 328, or sorry, after 902, this is going to be confusing because addresses are not the way to do a podcast here. Uh, uh, but where I live now, I moved from 902 2nd Street to uh, a 1940. I'm not going to give out my personal address right now. <laughs> but a 1945 style home that we fully ran out in love in Queens Park. Uh, so my history, I've owned from brand new to 120 years old to 70 years old, and, and I've, I've had homes in all the different eras. And what I, uh, what, what I love about New West is that it has these character homes, these, uh, you know, the, the 19, the craftsman style homes, the... What I don't like about these homes is they're a ton of work. <laughs> they, they need a lot of work and they're a lot of work to maintain, so they're a little bit intimidating. Uh, but that being said, I, I, I like that the city has them and I like that they're incentivizing people to keep them, particularly in Queens Park. And I imagine that's going to trickle out throughout the city. But, but right now, Queens Park currently has a heritage protection on these older homes. So we're not going to lose them anytime soon. Okay. I want to talk about what I love about New West because I... The, the city clearly won me over, and within years, I felt more connected to New West than I did with Burnaby, but um, that was because Burnaby's a big city and spread out more, and New West is a little more tugged in together. But the, the, really, the people. <clears throat> so, you know, uh, I found that I just, in generally, knew my neighbors a little better. It's one of those cities where neighbors chat, uh, but what really kicked into gear was uh, in 2000. 13 when we decided to open Steel and Oak Brewing Company with my partner here, Jordan Foss. So I'm lucky to be one of the owners, one of the founders, and the, the, the experience of bringing a brewery to the city and the only brewery uh, at, at the time, um, <clears throat> it, was, it was phenomenal. So much uh, support from local, uh, uh, far more local pride in the brewery than I ever anticipated. You know, I remember opening day with a lineup around the block. Uh, all of our anniversary, you know, birthday parties for the brewery have been outstanding huge response. Now I'm a father of three and I coach soccer in the community. And, and when I'm on the soccer field at any point in time, there's a couple parents wearing a hat or a shirt that's steel and oak. So, uh, you know, aside from the fact that I can see physically see people coming to the tasting room, buying our beer, um, I see it when people are having backyard patios, but also wearing our gear, wearing steel and oak, local business pride with, you know, with pride, um, at soccer games and around town. So, you know, if, I, I don't feel that other breweries or other businesses in other cities are experiencing that to that level, but at any point in time, we're, we're, I guess we're kind of fortunate due to timing and for a while there being the only brewery that 
uh, people just loved us. And, and not just City Hall. Like, City Hall wanted us. Uh, regular, you name it. Uh, uh, bringing craft beer to the city uh, just showed me how local and how much people care about supporting each other out here. Um, outside of the support local element, uh, just a city of 70, 75,000 people, um, you know, uh, one high school, uh, sports like soccer and lacrosse, where essentially they bring the whole city together. You know, uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of events. You know, parades, uh, Hayek Festival, Uptown Music Live, Fridays on Front Street. There's a lot of events that the city puts on that bring people together, and and it's not. I mean, there are neighborhood specific events, but these are. There's just a lot of situations when you have kids or if you go to events where you run into the same people. And if, uh, you know, as a family with three children, I know families with similar age children around town that have overlapping interests. If they play soccer or lacrosse, you just, you run into the same people. And in Burnaby, I don't feel like it was as connected when I lived there. Um, Yeah, I touched on the fireworks. I touched on the community events. I want to talk about a little bit of... How, how to explain New West to outsiders because we get a little bit of, we get not a little bit, quite a few Vancouverites coming to New West. And, and for you Vancouverites that don't know much about New West, it is kind of like the East Van of the suburbs, as I've said. Uh, but to give you an idea of neighborhoods and, and kind of analogies to use them, I, I wouldn't say there's a, a bad neighborhood in New West, but there's neighborhoods that have different reputations. I, I think even what was maybe considered you know, a lower tier neighborhood like, say, Uptown that has rental buildings and, and, you know, old homes and new ones. But Uptown is not, there's some great pockets in Uptown. And Uptown would be arguably the closest thing to like a Mount Pleasant in Vancouver. Uptown's where we're going to get duplexes, triplexes, more infill, more density, more unique architecture and buildings. Uh, it's going to be where there's more affordable options for families uh, due to the density that they're encouraging there. It's where you're going to get a duplex next to a house, next to a rental building. It's, it's kind of a combo of Mount Pleasant and Kits in that way. Um, but I think it's a slow mover. So I don't expect it to feel like Mount Pleasant or kits anytime soon, but due to the zoning and the way that the neighborhood's going, over time it will get there. Uh, Queens Park would be kind of like the Shaughnessy of New Westminster. It is the most expensive neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> it is the most known neighborhood from you know people that are drawn from Vancouver, but it's basically the, the draw to Queens Park is the the character, the charm, the tree lined streets, and the fact that Queens Park's right there. And also, it is a good walking distance to the shops on 6th Street. And if you're in Lower Queens Park, you're quite walkable to the SkyTrain in downtown New West, which is great. So Queens Park is a popular neighborhood, but some, uh, some ones that go under the radar um, that I, I think are just as good in different ways. Glenbrook North, you know, Glenbrook North from 6th Ave to 8th Ave, uh, half of Glenbrook North, the south half, is, feels the same as Queens Park. And I think it's, to me, arguably, I'd take a lot of those streets over ones in Queens Park. Uh, Massey Heights, the Heights, there's a couple streets up there. They have these, you know, uh, mid-century style homes, uh, less density, nice views, um, great neighborhood, uh, less walkable, uh, less 100-year-old charm, but great 60-year-old charm. Uh, The West End of New Westminster has some great pockets. I love Sapperton for some of its character, although it's busy in some streets. There are some uh, great streets where you get a similar feel to Queens Park, but it's more of like a... A Queens Park meets a denser neighborhood. So if Sapperton to me would be kind of, I don't know, how, what would that be? Main Street area, but not as expensive. It is a more affordable area. Um, uh, one of the, so the draws to Sapperton would be the charming homes. And uh, I, I think it's going to have the best chance of the hipster businesses on Columbia Street that some areas might not get. It already has an arcade, so it's getting there. Um, uh, but also it has Royal Columbian Hospital, which will you know be one of the biggest hospitals in Lower Mainland, and and you know for the nurses and people that work there, it's a great option. And and I I, I know personal experience in Queens Park that a lot of the doctors that work in, in RCH live in Queens Park. So, um, a comparison, uh, I, you know I want to touch quickly on the 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 condo part of it. Uh, you know just to give you approximate numbers, there's about. 75,000 people in New West, and I think about 9,000 homes and about 
19,000 condos roughly. So condos, there's actually a good selection of new condos, old condos, age-restricted condos, uh, wood frame and concrete. So for a smaller city, I, I think it has great options and, and that's a lot of our business. So, you know, you have the new Westminster Quay, which is unique on its own. It has the boardwalk. It draws in a lot of people because of uh, how it's a little bit, uh, well, walkability to downtown New Westminster Skytrain, the river and the boardwalk are the main draw. And on the negative side, it has the train tracks on the other side. Most people get used to the train tracks, but that's the, that's the polarizing aspect of, of the key. Train tracks on one side, river on the other. Um, downtown New West, love it. I think it's going to be a very vibrant downtown one day. It's just going to take some time to get there. Uh, we, you know, Piva, El Santo, great restaurants, Old Crow, Coffee Shop, there's more. I can't list them all. Uh, but they, they, uh, they have some great businesses there already. And um, unlike Burnaby that has these 20 tower master plan communities, New West Minister's biggest community is Pier West right now, which is two towers. And um, and that's probably as big as it might get. Uh, you know, Victoria Hill's the biggest master plan community in the US that, that I can think of. But Pier, Pier West by Boza, going to the downtown core, that's gonna bring two more large towers of people. And there's already just been a couple buildings that have completed in recent history. And that population, I think, can support more local businesses. The only thing that might hold it, ba hold it back is just the retail space. You know, we, the, the old funky buildings that you see in downtown New West where they say, oh, that would make a great coffee shop. A lot of them come with, uh, well, a lot of them may be torn down. They might come with a demo clause. And most people that want to put a business into these old buildings want certainty that they can be there for a long time. And if they're going to be demolished, they're not going to attract a great tenant. So I think that really is one of the issues. But I want to chat a little bit here about the future of New Westminster because I, I think that... When I look at the businesses that are here now and, you know, being fortunate to be involved as a realtor in the city, but also in the local craft brewery, Steel and Oak, I'm seeing the potential of the city. And I think that if, if there was more entrepreneurship, um, uh, well, I'd love to encourage more entrepreneurship. I'd love to encourage more business to open. I finally, I think the city's at a scale where it can support more businesses than it currently has. So I, I'd love to see it get there. And if there's some brave entrepreneurs, go for it. I, I, I hope I hope you get there. I think there's opportunities in downtown New West and, and uptown. And quite frankly, I'm sure there's all over. Uh, Sapperton, probably, I'd love to see more towers in Sapperton, but it's getting there. Um, but what I would like to see is, is just basically... Uh, more, more options for families. You know, I think uh, when I see the future of New Westminster, uh, they came out with a new official community plan in the last few years, and it, it included more medium density and townhouse zoning. And I think that's great. Um, we want more townhouses. We want more mixed-use buildings, low-rises, medium density. The issue is that, you know, I think they need to go a little bit further to if they really want people to build townhomes, uh, they need to incentivize it a little further. You know, right now when you do the math on it, if you live in a house in Sapperton and you're sitting on townhouse zoning, you know, your home might be worth 1.1 and to a townhouse developer, your home might be worth 1.2. Um, and that's not enough of a lift to justify changing your life for a developer. Really, the lift should be like, it should be valuable to a townhouse developer at 1.4 or 1.5. You need that premium to incentivize you to move for these townhouses to get built. And the problem is that, well, you can live in a house that's 50% of the lot size, or a townhouse developer can come in and put a townhouse there that's 90 to 100% of the lot size, so you get more buildable space but they have to go through a rezoning process to do that, which involves a two-year process, really, when you account all factors, and uncertainty. And when you have a two-year process with uncertainty, um, for that little bump in buildable area, it's not enough of an incentive for a lot of developers to do it. So, you know, if you have uncertainty and it takes that much time, most developers are more likely to go for projects that have more certainty and take less time, or, or if you have two years of uncertainty, they're gonna go after bigger fish. You know, it's better to go after a building or a low rise than it is to squeeze a townhouse out of a, out of a house. So, you know, I think one thing that New West did right is they, 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 uh, they appreciate protecting the charm and character of the old homes in the city and they're very paranoid at maintaining the identity, which I love. Um, 
they, they created a official community plan, which I think is the right intent to increase the density. Um, and they've done things like heritage protect neighborhoods to, you know, Queen's Park to maintain that look and feel. The, the issue that I see is if they, you know, if we truly want to help, uh, you know, people in the next five to 10 years uh, that are affected by this heritage protection or that are affected on, you know, these areas where there's uh, being rezoned to townhouses from, de from detached homes. The rezoning process is a bit, is what creates uncertainty. So there's two things here. There's one, either do a rezone and so that builders, when they buy three homes, they know what they can do with those three homes as opposed to uh, buying three homes and with the likely intent of doing this with these three homes, but having to go through committees and a city process that gives you uncertainty until it's approved. Um, so, you know, I, you know, an easy solution would be to just rezone all these properties so that there's no uh, uncertainty on what you can do with them. Um, and another thing is, uh, if you don't do a blanket rezone, I think the other thing is just up the density. You know, if you're going from a 0.5 FSR to a 0.9 or a 1 FSR, and I'm sorry I'm using language, or this is the buildable percentage of a lot. So if you have a 6,000 square foot lot, you can build a 3,000 square foot home if it's 0.5 FSR. And um, if it's 0.9 FSR for townhouses, a 6,000 square foot lot would be 5,400 square feet of townhouses. Um, but that's not enough. It's not enough uh, to really encourage development. And that's why we haven't seen many townhouse developments uh, happen yet. Um, so, and, and outside of that, low areas like Lower 12th Street um, that I think have loads of potential to be redeveloped uh, are study areas that, that don't have a rezone that a developer would have to bring a proposal to the city. And um, that process, well, one, you need a developer to take the risk of owning the land and spending the money on bringing a proposal to the city without knowing it's going to get accepted. But what that really does is it doesn't encourage developers to buy these land in these areas because they don't know what they can do with them. And the landowners of these areas see the, see the potential of density on their land, so they want top dollar. But the developers look at the land and they see, oh, I don't know what I can do with this. It's a long, uncertain process, so why take the risk? And that's why I think the development in the West is a little slower than it could be. Now, if that's intentional, I don't blame you, but if, if the hope is to encourage more development, we need to reduce the uncertainty or increase the incentives, is basically what I'm saying. Um, outside of that, I, I think what the people that I, you know, I, I, the people that are moving to New West, uh, I guess I can, I'll sum up this way. Um, the first time buyers, uh, the first time homeowners, the young professionals, the ones that want to buy a condo, work downtown, and want to be somewhat close downtown but be a homeowner, I think New West is a great option. I think uh, if your life is work and commuting and, and, um, and, and, and being in a central location is important, I think it's a great city. Um, the, say, the downsides of New West to where we lose people. We lose people to Port Moody. We lose people to North Van. We lose people to mountains, greenery, and water, and beaches. And, and New West is an inner city, urban suburb. It is not an oceanic mountain suburb. So um, Port Moody uh, and New West, similar vibe, but different in many ways. And that's kind of what we've seen as a lot of people kind of going out of New West to Port Moody or North Van for those reasons. Uh, but great condo options for those first time young families, first time house buyers. Um, the frustrations with buying a house in New West is that there's a lot of bad ones. <laughs> and I wanna say bad ones, I wanna say houses that need work. So um, the great news is it's a little more affordable. You know, you can get home, detached homes under a million dollars in New Westminster. Um, it's affordable because there's older homes, there's smaller lots, there's multiple eras, ages, sizes, lot sizes, locations that bring in different price levels. Uh, but it's a great city to get an entry-level detached home in. The downside is selection is light. So if there's, there's times where there's lots of people looking at the same product. I mean, I've had multiple experiences where I've had two, three people ask me about the same home, and that's just due to people wanting to be in New West at times where there's a lack of supply, and you find that people go after the same houses. Um, so if, if you're not tied, if you want to detached home, but you're not tied to a city, there is, just by the numbers, more selection in Coquitlam and Tri-Cities, and obviously in the Fraser Valley and Surrey, but um, uh, New West is great if you can find something you like. And then for the families, uh, 
I will say like, as a, I, have, I have three young kids. Um, New West is a great family oriented community. I've, I've really fallen in love with, uh, with the community through sports, through schools. Um, you know, my kids aren't in high school yet. They go to Herbert Spencer Elementary, great school. The, uh, just the fact that you see the same parents, same people every day that live in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, lacrosse is a, you know, a New West, traditional New West sport. So, uh, you know, it's one of those, it's a city where the sports bring people together, the schools bring the neighborhood together, and um, there's a little bit of a history and tradition there. And, and we are not a lacrosse family, but we've become one because of the culture of New West, and, and, and our kids love it. But um, from, from a, I guess from a demo, the people that live here, the people that are moving here, it's a great family option, and the amenities close to SkyTrain, Canada Games Pool, Queens Park, Pier Park. Um, they're going to be connecting a boardwalk all across the waterfront from Sapperton to the Key. There's a lot of good, and I think it's a great option for many people. Anyway, I hope you got some value out, about, out of this New Westminster podcast. It's just me ranting about the city I live in and love. Um, uh, but that's it, guys. That's it. That's New Westminster. 